welcome back to Dave's Garage. My name is Dave. I teach people how to play the saxophone. If you would like a private lesson, reach out to me at davegoodsax at gmail.com. davegoodsax at gmail.com. Be happy to accommodate you either in studio or via Zoom. We can do it all. We've got it all covered. Still messing around with this, uh, this old Con 6M alto sax. Very cool alto sax. I, I, it's got just such a punch. You know, it's a little bit smaller than uh, a modern saxophone, but it's got this wonderful, wonderful punch. And yeah, that's a tenor sax read I'm using on there. You can too. They sound pretty good. Tenor sax read, this is a Meyer 7M mouthpiece common. Nothing fancy about that. Anyway, what I want to talk about today is what happens when you reach your plateau. Like, you, 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 you know, you've been working away at this, the, you know, the, the craft of learning your saxophone, and you feel like you've, you've reached a plateau, and, and that you're not getting any better, right? And that's what uh, one of my students, Chris from Connecticut, uh, really got bent about this. Uh, he got bent about his, his, his tone production, which he doesn't think was getting any better. We talk about that in another episode. Tone production is what it's all about, right? But, but reaching a plateau, and he put his horn down. Uh, this guy who could, you know, I mean, he's been into it for a year, and he's made great, great progress, great growth. Tenor sax, alto sax, got the right mouthpieces, got the right, put the right energy into it, right? But he reached a plateau, he reached a peak, and we all kind of do that. And uh, even his wife, he says, said, are you ever going to play your saxophone again? And he was, I didn't think so. I mean, he was really kind of bent about feeling that he wasn't making any progress. And so I want to talk about that today because it's a place that if you haven't gotten there yet, you will. Uh, all of us who have played for a long time have done that before. We've reached uh, peaks and plateaus in our playing and it just leveled off and thought, well, you know, uh, am I going to get any better? First of all, I want to just change how you think about what it is to reach a plateau, okay? First of all, I want you to think about the time that you put in before you reached that plateau, that leveling off period. I want you to think about all the time that you put into the horn, okay, that got you to that place. And we did this, you know, Chris and I did this. I thought about, you know, like the, the whole year of work that you put in to getting to this place where you now feel like, you know, you've reached some competence in playing, but it's not getting any better, all right? But just think about that. You know, it took, a lot of, it took a lot of work to get to a place where you might feel that you've leveled off in your skill set, okay? Uh, that's the first thing I want you to think about is a mind change. Now, I've got a couple of ways to blast you right out of that, just shoot you right up back into the stratosphere of learning again. And the first is when you, when you reach a peak like that, I want you to not only change about, just remember what it was that got you into saxophone, right? What was it that started you on this journey? And how much time have you spent to get to where you are? Let's give yourself, you know, uh, a nice big pat on the back for that. What got me into saxophone was uh, a, a drum set. I, I'm not making this up, a drum kit. Uh, we were in the fifth and sixth grade school band. And, uh, you know, school band is school band. And uh, a couple of guys decided to start a, a, a rock and roll band on, on their own. Uh, uh, a guy named Chris Anderson who actually owned the drum set and it was a sparkle tone blue drum set and just being in the presence of that drum set was like magic. And the other guy was Rod Angus and I think another guy named Dale Haas and they had electric guitars, H-A-A-S, Dale Haas. And they had, they had and, and those were cool, right? electric guitars and amplifiers and all that nonsense. And it was just so cool. And they needed a sax player. So I got to be in that band. And you know, when I, when I feel like, ah, yeah, that's been a long road. I think back on the magic of that, right? Something got you to start playing saxophone. Something really kicked you into high gear. Something did. And often it's good to remember that, okay? But what's really gonna blast you out of that plateau uh, is do this. Go find a teacher somewhere, like a, like a teacher who plays the way that you would like to play. I mean, really think about this. And you might have to do it on Zoom, but I'd prefer you do it in person. Find a teacher and buy a couple hours of time and sit down and just chop it up with them, okay? Go over your concerns, uh, talk about it, uh, play together, uh, and mostly just play together, okay? Uh, that's, 
that's one of the just the best ways of getting out of a plateau. We've all been there as teachers and as players. We have all gotten to those places, and we've all gotten to places where, you know, the horn might just sit in the corner for three or four days, which is not uncommon. But still, uh, finding somebody that's skilled at guiding people, uh, you know, up the back up the mountain, is not a bad way to go. Um, and if you're taking lessons right now, find a different teacher. I tell that to all my students. If you only study with me, you will only know what I know. So find somebody else. Study with somebody else. Not YouTube. <laughs> no. Not a YouTube thing, man. Don't do that. Even though we're doing a YouTube thing right now. I want you to, you know, get a flesh and blood, you know, brick and mortar kind of situation where you can go and actually blow with somebody. Second thing that'll, that'll jazz you right up and back into playing your horn is going out to hear somebody play live, okay? This is something that a lot of my adult learners just don't do because they're busy, right? They're the, the change the oil person in the family, the grocery shopping person, they got day jobs or night jobs or both, whatever it is. And so playing the saxophone uh, is uh, more or less a solitary pursuit, right? Now, is that really what you set out to do? Play saxophone by yourself in your practice room, bedroom, slash wherever that is, garage. Is that what you set out to do? Is that really, was that really what you wanted to do when you, uh, when you went and you got one of these things and you said, oh my God, I have got to play this. Was, was playing alone, learning, le learning, you know, slick arpeggios or whatever, or listening to Knucklehead like me on YouTube, was that really what you set out to do? Is that really playing? All right, no, the answer is no. So what I would love for you to do is, is to go out and hear a saxophone player. And I can't tell you how many times in my lifetime I have done that. And been completely Im just you, you go right back home again and you think I, I, where's my horn i gotta get my horn i gotta i gotta see if i can't do what i just heard right uh chris potter uh i think i've talked about chris potter before if you don't know who he is look him up amazing just technical straight ahead jazz brilliant saxophone player and i'm not a jazz saxophone player so he wasn't really in my wheelhouse but i had got tickets to go see him when he came to town here and his tone blew me away. I wasn't ready for that. And the interplay between he and his musicians, the conversations that they were having at that high level of playing that they brought out of each other, changed me. It just, you know, and it'll change you too. And I don't care who it is, just get out and listen to a, a real saxophone, a live saxophone player, okay? Now, the last thing I'm going to give you, that's three, right? One is, uh, is, uh, is hook up with a, with, a, with a teacher, different teacher perhaps, and one that plays the way that you want to play, okay? And, and get get talked back off that ledge, okay? Second is go out into the world and listen to a real saxophone player. Now, the big, the big you know, Netflixes and HBOs and blah, 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 all those people that spent zillions of dollars to get you to stay home and never leave your house and keep your eyes glued to the screen, right? And it's working. How do I know this? Well, here we are, right? Your eyes are glued to a screen. You're not driving in a car right now. No, you're home. You're watching this, you know, this video. And thank you so much, by the way, 420 of you. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Uh, so, you, you know, we, we, bought the, we bought that, you know, uh, that whole program of staying home and watching stuff. So I don't want you to watch a saxophone concert on you. I don't want you to dial up David Sanborn, you know, and watch, the, you know, the night show or whatever he was doing. No, go someplace and listen to a sax player, all right? There still are tours. There are still people playing around. Even somebody in your hometown, just, just get out. Just get up off the couch and go out and use your ears and listen, right? And, and then the third thing that I'm going to throw at you is, you know, when you get really, you know, like where you, you're isolated and you're just, you know, running, you know, just lines out of, you know, your practice books or you're, you know, trying to, you know, copy the latest uh, Michael Brecker thing that you just found on YouTube or whatever it is, you're transposing, you know, whatever, whatever you get going. Man, what I want you to do is, is put that down for a minute and get a practice buddy. A what? You heard right, a practice buddy. Find somebody who can come over to your house or you can go to their house, all right? And just sit down and run some tunes. Got to be somebody at the same, you know, playing the same kind of music you play. I mean, basically the same wheelhouse, right? Doesn't have to be the same exact charts, unless you're brand new at this. But you know, I, if you've been playing for a while, you've got a little bit of a repertoire. You got a, maybe you got a real book, maybe you've got uh, some other books, or maybe you've just memorized some songs. Find someone like that. Where do you find them? Not on Craigslist. I, I no, I mean no disrespect Craigslist, but I've uh, 
I've never found anybody uh, satisfactory in, in this area, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that came through that sort of advertising. And uh, you, you want to be careful who you invite in your home. Not saying that Craigslist is a, is a clearinghouse for weirdos, but, you know, I'm just saying that you, be careful. Um, maybe you could meet in a, like a neutral place or something like that until you get to know each other. But still, the, uh, the, I would call a teacher. I would call somebody in town or maybe even like a music store. You might have a, a, a local music store. And they might, you know, or, you know, be able to hip you to somebody that, you know, again, you could talk to, start the dialogue, and and hook up with somebody. And after who it is, guitar player, trumpet player, keyboard player. I'm gonna go jam with a drummer today. Just me and the drummer. That's right. In about two hours, I'll be over at Dave Madden's studio, and we'll just be. And we've and we've done this for years. So it it really, it, just as long as you have somebody that you, and why does this work? A practice buddy. Well, they're gonna bring in songs that you don't know, and they're gonna bring in experiences that you haven't had, all right? You gotta link up with this person. You have to you have to link up and start using music mind, right? And if it's, a, you know, like a alto sax versus alto sax, you gotta start thinking about intonation and, uh, you know, all that sort of thing that you don't do when you're playing by yourself. So you have something to look forward to, and playing with another person is sort of like a little mini audience, and you know, you gotta step up. Makes you a little bit nervous. Yeah, exactly. So you got to do that. Uh, jam sessions, if you're ready for those, hit up a jam session. But I think the three, right? Find a good teacher that speaks your language. Number two, all right? Number two and number three. Um, just, just think about going to listen to saxophone players as often as you can, or live music, just whatever, even live music. If there aren't any saxophone players in town, just go to your bands. Get out, do that, listen to music and find a practice buddy, okay? But again, rethink the way that you think. Reframe the way that you think. Walk with me on this one. Would you just reframe how you think about reaching that plateau? Don't put your saxophone away and, and run off and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn, I'm, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna learn guitar now, or whatever, just stick with it, okay? Because we all reach that, everybody. It's a normal part of learning to do a new, just a new thing. It's a normal part of, of growth, right? It's a normal part of climbing a mountain. How many people do you think reached a plateau and then the storm came in and they said, oh, we gotta go back. And they started again, right? Oh, that's the key. They started again. So anyway, the happy, the happy news here is that Chris you know, got his horns back out and, uh, and, and broke the G sharp key in his tenor. So he's playing alto, like me. And he's, uh, he's enjoying it and he's doing okay and he's working on tone. I'll save tone, like I said, for another lesson. Uh, any ideas that you have or questions that you may have, uh, if you'd like to, please subscribe. If you haven't done that already, hit the little subscribe button. Love to have you uh, send me ideas for future uh, sessions that we can have here. And again, private lessons can be had here. Reach me at davegoodsax at gmail.com. All right, let's get you off that plateau and back into playing music again. Thanks so much for all of you for being here. Catch you again in Dave's Garage.